In this clip, we're going to learn about the ghost feature. So we're utilizing the exact same ball bounce animation scene. So let's go ahead and just select the main control for this ball rig. All right, and then we're gonna go up here to visualize and let's go down to ghost selected and open up the option box. So it's gonna open up the options for the ghost tool. And let's go ahead and just go to edit, reset our settings to make sure that we're both working at the exact same settings. So right up at the top, we have this type of ghosting option and currently it's set to global preferences. So that actually means it's ghosting this object based on the actual animation preferences that we set. So what we need to do is go over here to our animation preferences and we'll open that up and then we'll actually go to the display category and choose animation. And that's gonna open up the ghosting properties or preferences here. And you can see we have a couple different options choosing how we actually wanna ghost this. So we can choose steps before current frame is three, steps after current frame is three. So what this means is that it's going to display a ghosted image either three steps behind the current frame and three steps after the current frame. So if we go ahead and just hit save, and then what we'll do is let's scrub forward on our timeline to go to frame 10, and then we'll just hit apply utilizing these global preferences. So you can see that it's basically created a ghosted image that is three frames before frame 10 and then three frames after frame 10. Now, as we scrub forward, it's automatically going to update that ghosted image for us and you can see we're getting that three frame ghosted image, three frames before and three frames after. What we'll go ahead and do is just undo a couple times to get rid of that. Now let's take a look at this drop down menu and choose a different option. So let's choose custom frames. So this means that we can actually set the actual frames that we wanna display a ghosted image on. So currently by default, it's gonna be set to frame one, frame 10 and frame 20. So if we hit apply, you can see that we only have these ghosted images right here based on where those keyframes are in time. So we have it set to one, 10, and 20. Now we can go ahead and undo that as well. And of course you could type in any value in here that you wanted. We'll go ahead and choose this drop down again. And this time we'll choose, let's go ahead and choose custom frame steps. So this is the exact same setting as going into your animation preferences. We can set the steps before the current frame and the steps after. So what we'll go ahead and do is increase these to, let's maybe go to eight, and then eight as well as the steps after, and then we'll just hit apply. And now you can see we're ghosting eight steps before and eight steps after. So this is giving a really good visualization of basically the path that this animation is taking. And we can just play this, and you can see that ghosted image updating in real time as it's playing. So this is another really helpful tool that you can use for being able to track the actual path that your animation is taking through 3D space. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another option here and we're actually going to just choose the keyframes. So if we select that it's actually going to ghost an image for each keyframe. So if we go ahead and change this frame range we can either choose time slider or we can set a start and end time. We'll go ahead and choose start and end time We'll keep the start frame to one, the end frame to 121, and then we'll hit apply. And now you can see it's just simply created a ghosted image on each keyframe. So there we go. And you can see again, while we're not able to see the exact path by utilizing this keyframe, we're getting a broader look at the overall motion that this animation is taking through 3D space. So now that we learned about the ghost tool inside of Maya, in the next clip, we're going to take a look at the animation snapshot.